Hello and welcome to Real Hi-Fi. So we're going to kick off with our first video on this channel. The video that is going to help you with your Macintosh amplifier. This video, the tips that you get from this video is actually also going to help you with other amplifiers. So um, I've basically been using a lot of years of my life listening to thousands and thousands of setups and tens of thousands of um, pieces of equipment where I've basically done a lot of experimenting to find out what exactly works in the hi-fi community, how you get that really, really good sound without having to buy yourself uh, to the solution. Um, so here it is. As an example, I've got the very first real amplifier that I bought with my own money, a Macintosh MA6900, as you can see in the picture. Gorgeous amplifier. Fabulous unboxing experience, like with most Macintosh um, products. One of, one of the best things about Macintosh is just unboxing it and, and setting it up and trying it for the first time. It's an amazing experience. And I really, uh, <laughs> just purely for that one reason, to unbox it when it's completely new, it's just an amazing experience. So, um, yeah, had to mention that. Let's dive into it. So basically what you've got here is a, um, when you're buying a Macintosh amplifier, you are usually getting a multifunctional box that does a lot of stuff, equalizer, headphone, all kinds of other stuff. Um, let's dive into the, uh, the tricks. So let me just have a look here at the text that I wrote. So the overall impression I get when I sat, when I listen to most people's Macintosh equipment um, and then comparing it to my own Macintosh sound that I used to have back in the day, um, I feel that a lot of Macintosh owners, um, they, they have this very limited standard um Macintosh sound I usually find it very bright mechanical dull suppressed and two-dimensional and um, these tips that I will share with you are really going to change the sound a lot and um, but if you like um, if you like the the, the stock Macintosh sound um then fine you don't have to do any of this but this is basically to to really unlock it to get the sound more rich uh, go deeper into the detail get a more human-like quality of sound and to basically you know, you know get that personality going a bit more so it doesn't become this um old bitter uh cold mechanical sound so let's dive into it so in, let's just quickly here in regards to this specific macintosh amplifier that i had back in the day um the ma6900 um i could hear when it was new it had a huge huge potential uh it almost like it was sitting on the sound, but it wasn't really letting go of it. And that's actually pretty typical Macintosh with the products that they make. And let me just get into that because this is where the, the story really starts in order to, to, to get all of these tweaks that I'm explaining. So you buy a Macintosh, you unbox it, you turn it on for the first time and yeah, you can hear that, that there's a lot of potential there. 
but somehow it doesn't quite sound as good as when you were listening to it at the store. Now, it of course makes a lot of sense because the usually the the demo equipment that you hear in the stores have been there for some couple of months. They've probably been used for a couple of hundred hours. And if the store owner is, um, is, you know, reasonably smart, what he will do is typically he will leave the Macintosh amplifier on, not fully on. Okay. This is fully on when you see the, the lights and the watt meters. What I mean is just before it gets to this point, you only have, as you can see with my mouse here, this red light lighting up, indicating that it's on standby. So if you just have it on standby, not fully on, it will draw about two watts of power. And that, that's not really any problems uh, in regards to uh, amount of power that you use per year, basically for free. So that's good. You, you start there. When you get your Macintosh amplifier, make sure that it is almost always on standby. Don't turn it completely off. So this setting here is fully turned on, ready to play some music. If we press the power button, then it would go to standby. And I think, I can't remember if it's underneath or where it is, there's some kind of a power switch thingy. If you then turn it completely off, so there's no power in the watt meter or the standby or whatever, then next time when you turn it on, it will be completely cold. The circuitry will not have been uh, warm enough for you to actually do anything with the amplifier, it, it, it will almost be sitting on the sound, being very closed in um, re in regards to the sound stage, okay? So in, in, order, in order for the amplifier to get its effortless um, power and big separated detail, leave it on standby in general. So uh, let's just get on with it. Um, So that's the, the, the first tip, okay? Very important. <clears throat> Keep that sucker on standby. That will help a lot. And I really think that's one of the, one of the, the, the few, I don't know, trademark um, special technologies that Macintosh has that it's in standby mode. Uh, that, that's a really nice thing to have, really, really nice thing. So if you've got it, use it. <laughs> It makes a huge difference. Okay, on to tip number two. It took me a long while to, to really understand this, but Macintosh transistor amplifiers usually don't like sophisticated power bars that are expensive or uh, power regenerators. There are some few exceptions. Um, for example, ISIL 8 mini sub access. Um, that is one of the best ones. Uh, you can't really compare normal uh, regenerators to this box, but it basically sounds good with most equipment in the world. ISIL 8 mini sub access. Um, but in, in general, you get the feel um, when you listen to a, a Macintosh amplifier that um, it just doesn't like <clears throat> regular um, expensive power bars, regenerators, all of these power boxes. So I would suggest just getting a normal crappy power bar. It could be a $5 power bar from some kind of uh, supermarket thing like Ikea uh, supermarkets, uh, um, some, some kind of a 
center where you buy your wood or whatever just just some kind of a basic power bar to start with because <clears throat> the overall problem that i feel that exists with with macintosh is that it has a tendency of um just not completely letting go of um of the music almost as if it's kind of filtering dampening the sound not really uh want to extend its arm towards you and and, and free it so when you've got a regular power bar that handles uh dirty power there are some spikes in the uh, the, the power grid and usually this this gives a more what can I say, um, raw, unfiltered experience. And especially in regards to the Macintosh sound, now this uh, counts both for transistor and Macintosh tube sounds. It actually helps having that problem in the power grid. So when dealing with a Macintosh amplifier, to start with, I would definitely recommend a normal power bar that you select um just select any normal power bar and maybe after a while you can go with one that's a tiny bit more fancy but i do not uh, recommend in any way a power bar that has some kind of smart redirection of the power separate power groups um some something that is that, that is very fancy pants smart uh i i, I do not re um, recommend that so i would recommend staying away from that so um that's going to do a, a actually a huge difference and 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 begin to to release the sound and start feeling that it's just a bit more lively. It's, it just wants to uh, release the energy a, a bit more instead of holding back and making it neat and putting everything into boxes to, in order to try to get a tiny bit more detail. So yes, you will be giving up a tiny bit of, of detail going away from these power cleaners, but it's a good thing when dealing with Macintosh equipment because it makes the sound more integrated and natural. So I would recommend doing that. So on to our third tip here. And this is a really, really, really big tip that uh, almost no one really covers. This will really change the sound a lot. So connect the clip at the back. Let me show you what that is. This is the, the the, the clip that connects the preamplifier, built-in preamplifier with the, uh, what do you call it, effect uh, amplifier that's inside this integrated Macintosh MA6900 amplifier. Most modern Macintosh um, transistor amplifiers have this function that I'm pointing to here. Here where it says power amp in, and it has these clips. So, it's very, very simple. What you do is you just connect a good RCA cable to replace this really bad, horrible metal that's connecting these two parts in the amplifier. And having the, 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 uh, the chance to do this is absolutely fantastic. I can't understand why more manufacturers don't do this. Of course, if you just made a, a, a better in, internal uh, wiring between the two uh, elements in the amplifier, you would have a better design, but but you just don't have the same amount of fun. You know, you're, you're really able to change the, the, the core characteristic in a, in a very good way, having this option here. And I and I really think that this is one of the the um, the core reasons for 
uh, a lot of the problems with, with the Macintosh equipment. If you just get rid of this built-in clip, and let's just say that you have some Carter's cable or whatever, some kind of RCA cable that you like. If you have a pretty decent uh, RCA cable, you will actually begin to hear when you when you connect it from one port to the other, uh, on this one and that one, you will hear that it will just begin to blossom instead of having this skeletal, bright, limited, mechanical, Macintosh, cold and bitter sound. It will make a huge difference. I, I, made, I made this test with several pretty decent RCA cables and I was really blown away by um, how efficient this tweak was. I, I find it so much fun that Macintosh has um, broken the tradition and made this possible. You, you, were, you were actually able to do this in the olden days with a lot of the Technics amplifiers and, and so on back in the 80s. They also had these clips and um, I just find it amazing that, that they still have this. Um, so that it, it, it gives you the possibility of affecting the sound a lot. So use that, 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 that makes a huge difference. And if you're testing with an RCA cable, do it with something that has a bit of character that, that, that costs maybe a bit. You could make your own RCA cable, it doesn't have to be an expensive one, but this is the chance to really, you know, affect the sound in a positive way to, to, to put some character, some, some, some mass, some lifeblood into the sound, you know, making it seem a lot more interesting instead of this dull grayish sound that the Macintosh amplifiers sadly have a, have a tendency of because most people just don't deal with this, you know? That clip does not, that connect the clip thingy does not belong on a Macintosh amplifier. Just try and use an RCA cable, a basic one. And then from that on, that point on, try and take a tiny bit better uh, RCA cable and, and a tiny bit better again. You could probably borrow some cables from a hi-fi store perhaps. But it's, it's a lot of fun. It be Suddenly this amplifier just becomes a whole new different experience. You, you would just think that what, this, this tweak alone will give you the impression that suddenly you've chosen a Macintosh model that's probably one, two, three thousand uh, more expensive, you know that's how big a difference it, it actually makes. So um, yeah, thanks Macintosh for having that so we can <laughs> play with that function. And um, also a, a pretty good um, way of affecting the sound here. Again, at the back, if you look at uh, here around the, the power plug, you can actually see the, um, the fuse and it's a uh, interchangeable fuse with a very standard crappy Macintosh fuse that comes with it. It probably only costs like five cents to, to make this fuse. This fuse is guilty of um, removing a lot of personality and just sucking the 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 whole life essence out of the amplifier now sometimes i would actually recommend just leaving it in but make sure that you get these values that are written on your amplifier here and then get get two different types of fuses that fit this amplifier get one in gold get one in silver and then when you get your fuses, try, try one, perhaps gold, you put it in, suddenly you realize going from the standard Macintosh fuse to this gold fuse that, wow, suddenly there's, there's a lot more bass, suddenly you get a lot more personality, it get, just, just gets a lot more rich and feels a lot more like a tube amplifier. And then perhaps when you've used that for, I don't know, a month or so, try the the silver fuse 
then typically when when you try a, a good uh, silver fuse then there's a lot more punch clarity and sometimes it's more evolved sometimes the the gold fuse is is more evolved it actually changed quite a lot depending on the fuses um i remember going from an ahp fuse which was very uh i would say artificially warm then i went over to a hi-fi tuning uh, gold fuse and it was more evolved clean even though it was basically the same material so it's nice you know it it's it's not a tweak that costs a lot getting these fuses doesn't have to cost 50 or 100 or 150 uh dollars you know you, you you can get a pretty decent fuse for maybe 10 or or, or 20 dollars you know and that that's a lot of fun to experiment with that so try that that that's really going to inject some some life and and release some of the huge amount of potential that that these macintosh amplifiers usually have and um as the uh the fifth point here um i've noticed that when you suddenly start pairing uh these macintosh cd players and and, and macintosh ducks with the macintosh amplifiers it just clicks a lot more and somehow i don't know it's just it's i find it pretty difficult i've tried a lot of other gear on macintosh amplifiers and i would say that um it usually sounds pretty good but not entirely uh convincing so it's it's just because you know macintosh has their own kind of sound and getting getting close to that i, I would definitely recommend having a a macintosh a cd player or a DAC, or if it's not possible getting that getting something that has a similar sound to a Macintosh CD player or DAC, like for example, the, the Oppo audiophile Blu-ray players that are relatively cheap nowadays because uh, Oppo, I don't think they make Blu-ray players anymore. Or so maybe something that gives you even more value for your money, like the EVGA new audio sound card that you can put in a PC, you know, that that's an amazing amount of value where you can tweak the the bit rate on the sound and you have a lot of uh power to really regulate the um the sound that's coming out of your pc and this is actually extremely good sound this is this this card here evga new audio sound card is basically the best um audiophile sound card out there um it's it's I think EVGA and uh, AudioNote, they've been uh, working together on this project. And you can really tell that it has a lot more characteristic than a normal sound card, uh, which normally sounds very dull and bright and just not meant for audiophile use. So um, go with that if you can't afford uh, some Macintosh uh, CD, DAC, LP, whatever. Um and um yeah yeah six point and that's um i found out that the macintosh sound which is pretty american sounds good with american brands like clips that make the cornwall speakers or jbl and their what's it called i think it's is it 100 or a thousand l classic i can't remember but that sounds good with the, uh, the the Macintosh stock sound, usually with most Macintosh amplifiers. Also this one, this particular one. And of course the, the Fender Stein um, 1 CI and 2 CE, they all give a huge amount of uh, value and are very compatible generally with the Macintosh sound. So I just feel that be having heard a lot of uh, Macintosh systems, usually people go with these uh, typical brands like uh, B&W, Avalon, Martin Logan, of course, the, the Macintosh uh, speakers, which are, of course, fitting for the, for the Macintosh sound. But I just feel that 
a lot of these speakers usually cost a lot and then they don't really entirely click with the Macintosh sound. So I recommend getting something that that's that's similar like this. You know, the, you can of course get a lot of other speakers than, than these to play together with the Macintosh sound, but these are like obvious choices, you know, that, that really integrate with, with the Macintosh sound. And uh, seventh point here is that this actually works really, really good with the specific model that I had because the MA6900 was a very warm retro uh, sound, very uh, warm and retro, and it needed a bit more clarity, separation, attack, and these plugs here are really, really good at doing that at a very high level of course they're also very expensive so it kind of makes sense but Oyed, which you probably haven't heard on, until now basically is one of the very very best um, hi-fi plug manufacturers and i usually find that um, a lot of macintosh people um, they're kind of stuck on the same type of cables, MIT, Cardas, uh, Cardas plugs, uh, AudioQuest cables, you know, all these regular things. Um, and I mean, they're good in their own way, but I really think, think that this particular amp really needs that um, injection of, of life and uh, transparency. Uh, making it a lot more interesting. So um, Oyate, uh, 037 power plugs. This is basically my most um, favorite power plug. You can only you can usually only use this power plug on really good amplifiers. So you, you have to get up to at least this type of build quality that this Macintosh has before you can start using this power plug. This is typically not a power plug that you would use with transistor equipment because most transistor equipment in the world is a bit bright, a bit mechanical, not so natural. So that's why you usually use this particular plug with the tube uh, amplifiers. But this amplifier here, use these plugs. It's really, really good. And especially if you combine it with something that's really special here, Summer, summer cable, elephant, biowire speaker cable. I mean, it's like $10 per meter. I repeat, $10 per meter. You're getting a huge amount of value here. This is, the, the and, and it's a speaker cable. So what, what you're doing is you have to cut those speaker cables uh, and separate them, get a two meter wire and um, basically you just fit it in those plugs here and, and get it working now of course as, as i've written here this is of course something that you have to check with a professional i can't you know take responsibility for you doing this because it's not intended for this purpose but i have used these cables i've made them myself and used them for several years and if you just do a decent job it will be safe to use so as I've written here, you, the amount of value that you get is just ridiculous. You know, th this is a, a special cable that is like underneath the radar that performs um, as good as uh, most hi-fi brands uh, middle model. And I'm talking about cables that cost several of thousands of uh, dollars just for a power cable so try and go with that try and make that work out and if you can somehow use that cable here that summer cable elephant here if you can somehow get that working on an rca cable um, to a cd player or even a speaker cable it's a uh, uh, original in intended purpose it will sound incredibly good so um, try and go with that. Uh, that, that. That's a really, really good pairing with this specific MA6900 Macintosh amplifier. And, and generally with, with Macintosh, especially with the tube sound, 
it's it's a you get a lot of value with this cable so you don't have to buy the really expensive cables of course when you begin getting into this type of level of sound ma6900 uh, 7000 7900 8000 uh, 9000 model you you can of course hear the big differences in in sound when, once you go up in prices and choose these different cables that, that they have in the store but before you go and use a lot of money on that try and make these cables yourself or get a professional to do it for you and i think you will be very very surprised these are not ebay cables these are not the best cables you can get in a uh, in a high in a, what's it called <laughs> building market or whatever it's called home depot market this is not cables that you get in some kind of a car audio store. Uh, it's a lot better than that. These are not cables that uh, are equivalent to the bottom range of what they have in these expensive hi-fi stores. These are cables that are around the uh, the the middle, perhaps middle top class of, of cables that you can buy out there, the regular cables from the, the regular brands that, you know, I won't mention them, but <laughs> out of respect, but just try and get this, you know, th this this really, really makes sense, getting this particular uh, cable. And um, here, eighth point. Um, yeah, as I was uh, into before, um, so if you're going with summer cable on your on your power cables, use it on everything else if you use it on everything else and don't have this supermarket mentality of you know buying a nordost cable because it was cheap and then getting a cardest cable to work together with that in on the same system and then having a third cable that's a different brand you know that those are usually pretty bad ideas you know go with mit cable on every link cardest cable on every link or summer cable or whatever brand that you think that you like go with the same type of cable sound on everything and use the same type of plugs on most of the things and you will experience that the whole macintosh um, limited sound will open up it will integrate and even though they generally have a lot of um problems like most amplifiers on the market um suddenly suddenly just having used a bit of time and a tiny bit of money you will suddenly have unlocked a sound that you usually would have to pay 10 20 maybe even more times to to get you know so um that's really important really really important for you to get the really really good sound so just to end with my opinion of the uh, ma6900 amp that i had before was that it had a huge potential um i could definitely hear that there was some substance some some good sounds coming from it um i was slightly frustrated with it because it was slightly thin skeleton like mechanical but still retro ish which was a bit weird combination and um it's just you know it was this typical macintosh problem of not really completely letting go of the sound and and letting you in you know viewing the sound it was a bit like yeah yeah here look at it separated oh clear uh not fully being engaged in the sound just looking at it a bit at a, at a distance you know but i feel that once you get into these tweaks that i've uh, written down these tweaks here it becomes a completely different amplifier and this a lot of these things of course apply to other amplifiers and pieces of equipment that you might get in your hi-fi journey and um I hope you can use this because I've, I've used a lot of time listened to many thousands of uh, setups and usually when I test something 
I um, take that piece of equipment, listen to it in probably five, ten different rooms, pair it with five, ten different CD players, docks, cables, just to find out exactly how everything sounds so I can figure out what the pros and cons are of the uh, specific devices that I'm listening to so I can slowly begin to merge my own um, sound, make my own sound uh, come together. And instead of having a fixed solution, because if you're just going with uh, Macintosh equipment, you have a lot of money and you just put a B&W speaker on and, and some MIT mixed with Cardas and Nordos cables. You know, it's gonna sound pretty horrible, pretty horrible. And you're gonna be using a lot of time, a lot of energy, and you might even sell a, a pretty decent uh, Macintosh system without having heard of what it can actually perform. So, um, yeah. This, this, this was an, an amazing ex experience for me, getting this amplifier, testing it with uh, various different uh, different uh, equipment out there. And I highly suggest um, trying uh, Macintosh as a brand in your hi-fi journey. I personally have uh, evolved a bit in my taste, so I'm not, not I'm no longer into Macintosh. I'm listening to other gear now, but I did find it very interesting, especially going from regular hi-fi equipment that was out there, uh, Vincent, Musical Fidelity, Mad, all of these usual brands, Sony, Pioneer, um, they just couldn't come anywhere close to this sound once you had it set decently up. And um, so remember these, uh, the, these tips. And just try and not use a regular power cable on a Macintosh amplifier. I, I cannot tell you how frustrating it is because once you get up in this class of amplifier, a regular power cable sucks the, the life essence, the aesthetics of uh, that particular piece of equipment that you're listening to. Um, and it starts at around this level, Macintosh MA6900, because you can you can feel that uh, it is a pretty decently built uh, piece of equipment. And power cables actually start making sense uh, at this, uh, the, this, I wouldn't say price point, but at this level of, of sound. So not suggesting that you buy a one, two, three, ten thousand dollar power cable, but try and maybe, you know, start with a summer cable thing, try and build it. And maybe you can't afford these plugs, fine. But this will like cost you ten dollars, you know, and will beat most um, thousand or two thousand um, dollar power cables. So, um, why not try it? You know? um, so that was all for today. Thank you for viewing. Remember to subscribe.